Now, before I go into any great detail about this bike, uh, I'm just going to run through the the main uh, bad bit about it. Uh, so, when I picked the bike up, it had this desert tank on it. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not. Uh, it's not the, the tank that it should have. Um, so anyway, the guy, uh, the guy who uh, who I got the bike off, he had the original tank, uh, but it had a split in it. So um, I put him onto a guy called Adrian Turnbull, who restores loads of tanks, and he said that he could repair uh, the split and so he has repaired it here so it's it's few it's not going to leak fuel it has been repaired so it's not perfect uh, but it's a good workable tank um, and uh, it'll make the bike look a lot better the guy had uh, got this bit of old radiator hose that he put on the frame to stop the the tank from scuffing the powder coat uh, which i'm going to put back on i mean really a nice piece of foam or a piece of silicon tube like going across uh, and over the over the frame would be what i would use i don't have uh, anything that's just right here uh, so i'm just going to put this back on uh, and then I'll put the original tank back on, the one with the repaired split in it. And then, uh, yeah, you know, you know that you've got to do something. With, I mean, it's not going to damage the, it's not going to damage the frame. It's just not perfect, is it? That's the, that's the thing. Uh, and then ultimately, you can use that tank. You can use that tank, or uh, you could look for a, an original tank, 1984 RM500 tank. Uh, which uh, you will be able to find at some point. So that's the bad bit. So I'm going to put that tank back on and uh, then we'll uh, have a proper look at the bike. So cool bike number one of the day, 1984 Suzuki RM500. Don't get many of these. This one's been partially restored. It's got a couple of little issues, uh, which I'd like to try and talk about first. So here we go. So then the next issue really is the pipe, um, which as you can see has been kind of pieced together and badly welded and patched up. Uh, you can buy uh, some really nice pipes for these, which is what I would suggest would be the right thing to do because it's not been a great job that <clears throat> and obviously it's the pipe that's uh, melted the bottom of the tank probably they've not put uh, the foam or whatever in there so the tank's been riding low and touching the pipe um, and then obviously if it's been badly fitted then the pipe could ride a little bit higher so yeah so I'd I'd be Get in another pipe for that, and that would be the thing to do. Right, anyway, having said all that, let's move on to the the normal course of uh, of events, as I do with these bikes, and let's, uh, let's have a little run through it. Okay, so if you've seen on my Instagram and my Facebook this morning, I put on uh, a, little, a little picture saying that I was going to be looking at some proper cool bikes today and this is the first one so um, I've only had one of these before uh, it wasn't as nice as this one uh, but uh, funnily enough it came from um, Jeremy McGrath's dad's garage so um, I'm not saying it was McGrath's bike but that's where it came from um, so that was a a cool cool thing uh, this one here uh, I took in part X against um, a CR500 a 1987 CR500 and a 99 KX500 
uh, and I took it basically because I know loads of people who were after these things, uh, but also the guy had a 1985 Mako 500, which was a water-cooled um, Mako that I sold to him in the first place and I've always regretted it. So uh, I took this and the Mako in part X because I wanted to keep the Mako. Uh, the, the RM, although a very, very, very cool bike and very difficult to come by, is not really a bike for me. Uh, so the idea was always that I'd be putting this pretty much straight up for sale. Uh, you'll have seen, um, I've already gone into some detail about the tank. So this is the original tank, the original tank that was repaired. Um, and you'll have seen that uh, there's also the issue with the pipe. Um, it won't stop it running, won't stop it riding. Uh, it's just the pipe's not amazing and the tank has uh, had a repair to it. Um, so if you want it to be uh, mint and immaculate, uh, get another tank, uh, find another tank. But in the meantime, you can run it with, with this one. Um, very, very cool bike. Uh, lots of people, uh, disappointingly, and there's a big, there's a big thing about this. Um, basically, to run in twin shock racing in the UK, they need to, the bikes need to be air cooled, which this is, drum brakes front and back, which this has, and twin shock, so two shocks on the back, uh, or uh, no linkage. So this bike here um, has a, a monoshock and it has a linkage, so it won't fit into the twin shock category. Um, so a lot of people in the UK are chopping the frames and they're making twin shock bikes out of bikes that were never twin shocked. Now, I know why people are doing it, because you want to get the best bike that you possibly can in twin shock form so that you can race it, and this will be a cracking candidate to do that. Um, but in the long run, this bike is going to be more valuable and a cooler thing if it's left in its monoshock form, because that's how it left the Suzuki factory, uh, and that's you know that's what it was made to be. Uh, so I know why people are doing it, and I also know that the guy who's top of the list for this may also go down that road because uh, he uh, he races some some big twin shocks, and uh, I know he's got some twin shock converted bikes as well. So each to their own. It's not for me to say, uh, but there we go. So this bike has been partially restored. Uh, some of it, some of the bits are nicer than others. Um, it's got uh, new plastic, so it's got Mayer uh, front mud guard, rear mud guard, and it looks as though it's a Mayer front number board. Maybe it's not. It's an Italian. It's an Italian front number board. Um, but also uh, it's got DC plastic side panels. It's um, had the frame powder coated. It's got a new tire, new tires on both wheels. Uh, the wheels could do with a nice clean up, but they look, uh, they look all straight and, uh, and original and they match, which is always a good thing. Um, and other than that, it's looking like a pretty decent bike. It's got modern, uh, modern levers on it, um, like unbreakable style levers. I would say that they're no particular make. I would say that they're like a like a Chinese, like a Chinese make, um, etc. So uh, it's got a nice seat cover on it, but I'm going to say that at the back here, when you look at it you'll notice it's not been put on perfectly. Um, I'm not the best at doing that job either, uh, but uh, if you want it to be perfect, you probably wanna recover that. It feels as though it could well have a new seat foam under there, um, but I can't guarantee that. Uh, so it's gonna come with the original, the desert tank that came with it, and it's gonna come with the original repaired tank 
uh, which is the right temp to have on it, unless you can find another one. Some really nice bits to it, some some of the nice original stickers on there, on the uh, nitrogen canister for the shock, on the front forks and, and things like that. Uh, just, you know, some of it just needs to tidy up and a couple of bits and pieces probably need uh, changing for some for some other bits. Um, but there we go. Let's uh, spin the camera around. We'll have a look at it in uh, a bit more close-up detail, and then we can uh, do the gearbox check, get it fired up, and it's not raining today, so I should be able to uh, take it up the road. Unfortunately, as I would like to do, uh, to take it around my garden. My garden is absolutely soaked. So A, I dig a big hole in the garden, and B, uh, the bag had come back looking like it had done um, something like a horrendous enduro in Wales uh, in winter, like the snow run or something, it'd look horrendous. So anyway, I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna ride it around the garden, but hope with a bit of luck, I'll, uh, I'll take it down the road uh, so you can see it running and riding. Uh, the guy who I got it off uh, assures me that it does run and ride and he's uh, been riding it but uh, he's more of a like a uh, water cooled 500 guy rather than an air cooled he says and even and even with that uh, he says that he hates the way that, that the Mako that I got off him sounded uh, and it's just not for him so uh, I'm assuming that it's a similar story with this one uh, even though it's a super super cool Thing. So uh, I've pointed out the exhaust, the seat cover, like I say, if you look at that, it's just not perfect. Um, the, the silencer on it, um, I think, is the right silencer. It's had some dents and stuff like that uh, in, the, in there, uh, and it's got this little mounting bracket here. Now... There's also a little hole which needs to be drilled out of the side panel. So I'm assuming that that hole should correspond with this hole here, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually line up. Um, so maybe there's a link pipe missing or maybe it's the DC plastics uh, mold that's not quite right, uh, but I'm assuming that you could make what well, you could quite easily make a little spacer, a little dog leg kind of spacer to go in there and to attach the silencer to the side panel. So that'll hold, hold the side panel down, hold it to the silencer, and uh, keep it keep it off so it doesn't uh, so it doesn't melt. Anyway, uh, it's all looking good. I haven't done a spark check. Uh, and I haven't done a kill switch check either. The guy, like I say, uh, he's been riding it. So I'm uh, pretty confident that that's all going to be fine. Um, I haven't looked in the bottom of the carb or anything like that. I'm just assuming it's going to be all good. Um, the kickstart, um, well, so turns over, mega compression, as you would expect out of a 500. Um, it's possible that the kick starts on a spline too far because I have a feeling it should sit up here like this. Um, when you, I mean, it does go all the way back there, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, but just that space there in the head, uh, I would have thought would be for the kick start. Anyway, uh, engine looks nice. The engine and frame numbers are all present. As you would expect, the engine number is correct for a 1984 RM500. The frame number is correct for uh, a 1984 RM500. So that's all good. Uh, the forks, I haven't taken the gaiters down, uh, but um, the chrome's looking good on the forks. Um, the rim... It's got some scuffs and scrapes. There's a sl slight dent in it there. Um, the wheel, you know, they've, they've powder coated the frame. The wheels haven't been cleaned. 
uh, very well. Look at the hub, it needs a good clean. Uh, I mean, pressure washing and some decent bike cleaner would, would sort that out. Uh, the bottom of the fork legs again could do with a bit of work. It depends what you want it for. If you're wanting it as a riding bike, you're going to get these chips. Uh, and if you're gonna if you're gonna be riding it regular, it's as you clean it, these these things are going to start to look better um, anyway. Um, some of the little brackets, so the front brake bracket, the front brake cable should come on the front side of the number board. Uh, he's put it on the behind the number board. Uh, it should come across here and down. Uh, but anyway, it's easy to sort. Um, I've noticed that there's like the clutch cable, I think it is, is a nice new Venil uh, cable. Uh, I've already mentioned the, the levers, uh, the, look, the little uh, clutch, clutch lever boot is genuine Suzuki one, which is nice to see. It's got the little S on there. Um, the engine mount bolts. Uh, are the correct ones? I've not seen a lot of other, a lot of other bolts, uh, which a lot of them are original. You can you can see. Um, I think at this stage, I think they'd stopped imprinting the S on a lot of the bolt heads, uh, but I could stand corrected. I'm sure you guys would know better than better than I would. Uh, the brake plate looks all to be in good condition. No cracks or damage that I've seen on there, which is uh, good to know. Uh, someone's tried to make the stator cover look a bit better by taking the paint off it and painting the Suzuki on. Um, it's personal preference as to what you'd want to do with that. The engine looks nice. Uh, the head and the barrel, there's no fins missing. There doesn't look to be any damaged or anything like that. Um, that issue with the kickstart over there um you'd want to have the kickstart located in the right place to prevent it from damaging anything else uh the powder coating looks to be good um doesn't look as though there's like a couple of i think there's a little scuff there and that'll just be from where really the foot pegs were painted black um Depends what, like I say, depends what you want to do with it. If you're going to ride it, you don't need everything to look absolutely mint. Uh, you just want it to look decent and to make sure that it's all serviceable and serviced and you're not going to have any problems with it. Which to me, uh, it's not far off that at all. It looks like a decent bike. Um, like I say, you don't see many of these uh, RM500s. They don't come up for sale very often. And when they do, they get snapped up pretty quick. Um, Rear rim, again, other than being a little bit dirty and a few scuffs on it, is perfectly round. There's no, no dents that I have seen on the rim. So there's the, there's the slight dent on the front, but uh, nothing on the rear. And that slight dent on the front, I'd, I'd run it with that all day long. Uh, so yeah, so all in all, it's looking good frame rails at the bottom some damage here I can see a little bit of damage on the other side but that's something that uh, you can either live with that or uh, you can have someone repair that without too much uh, problems there we go right let's uh, spin the camera around do the gearbox check and uh, and see if we can get a run in and fire her up the road before moving on to our next special bike, which I'm hoping isn't going to take too much of my time, but it possibly could do because uh, it's uh, one of those strange things. Strange things. It's a four-stroke. I don't. What, I don't know what's going on with me, uh, but it's yeah, it's a four-stroke. I don't know how I'm going to manage. Okay, here we go. So we're in neutral at the minute. First gear. Can't turn that over. That's. Uh, Back into neutral, up into second, third, fourth, fourth is the top of the box, which is as I suspected, down into third, down into second, and 
back into neutral so we have all of our gears present and correct let's uh, see if we can get her fired up and uh, get her uh, get her uh, running and hopefully run up the road for you okay so uh, i'm just running off, off the bottle at the minute but we'll stick a bit of fuel in the tank um to run it up the road stroke can't get better uh, so yeah so she sounds great uh, I'll stick a bit of fuel in the tank and uh, we'll uh, ride her up the road now and then uh, get a few pictures and then uh, can send it off to my mate who's uh, very interested in it Must have gone cold, I've been talking for ages. Suzuki RM500, absolute beast. Please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, just search Phoenix Motos.